In a previous video, we were able to create this particular effect, but it worked only in black and white. In today's video, we're going to figure out a different method without using geometry nodes and using only the shader editor, a way to create the exact same effect such that you can use colored images as well. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. We're going to take the default scene and delete the default cube. We're going to add in a plane and every effect is going to happen on this particular plane. It's completely a shader editor based effect. We're going to take our camera, we're going to hit Alt G and Alt R to clear the rotation and location, then we're going to grab it on the Z axis and just pull it up. We can also hit zero on our numpad to go into the camera view and then just grab it on the Z axis by hitting G Z again and just moving it back a little bit more. Once you have the camera position, you can change it to the viewport shading of rendered so that you can see what's actually happening. We can go to the world tab and also change the color from gray all the way to black. Once we have that, we can go ahead and start with the material. So let's take our cursor to the joint of these two windows down here, click and drag up to create a new window. We're going to change this window type by clicking here and changing it to the shader editor. Now we can go ahead and select our plane, go to the materials and hit new. So first off, we're going to have to create the circles, which is going to be having the image texture. So to create the circles, we're going to use a gradient texture. So we can search for a gradient texture. And then let's just make sure that Node Wrangler is switched on by going to Edit, Preferences, search for Node Wrangler, and then check it. If it is checked, save preferences and close it. We can hit Control T to actually get the texture coordinates and mapping nodes. Now we can move this aside and hit Control Shift click the gradient texture to actually view what the mapping currently looks like. So right now the gradient texture is linear and you can see it goes from black to white. So we're going to change it from linear to spherical or quadratic sphere based on your preference. So now we actually have half of a circle. We'd want this circle to move, but we'll deal with that in a second. First, we want this to repeat multiple times with the single values that we can scale. So in order to do that, we're going to have to change the texture coordinate from generated to UV. So take UV and plug it into the vector and now shift this to the side. Once we have it on UV, we need this to repeat. So in order to re make something repeat, you can use the modulo function in the math node. So we can search for a separate x, y, z because we require this on only the x and y axes and not on the z axis. And you have to create the modulo for each axis separately. So let's place the separate x, y, z right over here. And now we have to combine the x, y, z as well. So let's search for a combine x, y, z and place that right here. And now we can connect the z to the z, the y to the y and the x to the x so that we get exactly what it was before. But now for the x and y coordinates, we're going to add in the modulo function. So let's search for a math node and change the type from add to modulo right here and then place it in between the x channel and also change the value from 0.5 to 1. Similarly, let's just duplicate this by hitting shift D and placing it in the y channel. So now that you have it on the x and y, when you actually scale the mapping node, you can see how we get the entire thing scaled as well. Now let's change the scale to one again and control the scale using a value. So let's search for a value node and just plug this into the scale. Let's make the zero to a one. So now as we increase the value, we can get more squares in our grid. Now that we have this, let's go ahead and actually make it such that this becomes a sphere and not just a quadrant. So in order to get the sphere, we're going to have to change the location and add 0 0.5 over here. So let's go ahead and search for a vector math node, plug that in and just change all of these to 0 0.5. You see that it's become much smaller. So instead of plus 0 0.5, we should say minus 0 0.5. And with that, we get the gradients. So right now, the gradient doesn't look like a circle. And for that, we require some more control. So we can move everything to the side and then search for a color ramp. We can plug that in over here and then just change the values to get what we want. Now, we want this to be a very sharp edge. So instead of linear, we'll search for constant. So it becomes a perfectly sharp edge. And then we can just bring this in to see what size we prefer. So I like this particular size. This is where we're going to keep it for now. So now that we have the grid that actually changes with the value, we can go ahead and plug this into the base color as well as the alpha. And since we're plugging this into the alpha such that all the black regions become see-through, we have to go to the shader node over here and then go down and change the blend mode from opaque to alpha clip. So now everything behind this will be see-through. We also will have to control shift click the principal BSDF 
to remove the viewer node and directly have the principal BSDF acting over here. We can also increase the roughness and decrease the specular completely. And also, since we're going to be using an image, we don't want the view transform to change the actual colors of the image. So in order to do that, let's go to the render properties over here, go to color management and change the color management from filmic to standard. So now whatever image we use is going to be exactly as we want it to be or as the original image is. So let's actually import the image. So for that, we're going to search by hitting Shift A and searching for the image texture. Over here, you can now click the open button and select the image that you want. Now we need this image to be multiplied by this particular grid that we created over here. So we can go ahead and search for a vector math node. Remember that we're using vector math and not normal math because there are three values that have to be multiplied, either RGB or HSV. So let's go ahead and change this from add to multiply and then plug this into the base color over here and take this color and plug it into the vector over here. Once we have that, you see that we get the circles and we get the image, but we want every circle to have only one particular color. So in order to do that, we're going to be using a Voronoi node and we're going to use Use the distance value and plug that into the vector. We have to change the randomness from 1 all the way to 0. And now we have to manage the scale to be equal to the scale of these circles. So in order to do that, we can take this value and plug that right into the scale. So right now you see everything is not matching up with the circle. So in order to get that to match, we have to move the circles by 0.5. So we can go to this mapping node and change the location on the x and y to 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. This can remain as 0. So since distance is not giving us the right values, let's switch this from distance to position. So now you can see with position selected, we get our image such that each vector shows only one color. So now when we actually change the value, you can see how the image comes in. We can take the light and remove it from the scene and then place this color not just into the base color, but also into the emission. Now with overlay switched off, you can see exactly how the image or animation occurs. You can create this to be very high resolution by increasing this value to a very high number. So suppose 200 and you'll see a very high resolution image but each circle will be of one single color only. Similarly, you can reduce the value to something really low, like 50, to get a low resolution image. So you can play around and actually animate this value to get a cool effect. If you want some other method for a few of these circles to show, you can always create another mask using a noise texture and plugging that in and multiplying it with the original mask. That's very similar to what we did in this previous video. So make sure you take a look at it if you do want to try that out. That uses geometry nodes so that you can actually use different objects or different shapes to get three-dimensional effects of the same. However, that would work only in black and white. Remember, if you don't use a vector node over here, you will get only the lightness value, and therefore it's also going to turn black and white. Apart from that, something that you need to note is that this works well only with perfectly square images, so the aspect ratio has to be 1 is to 1. In case you're using a different aspect ratio image, use any image editing software or even MS Paint to convert it into a 1 is to 1 ratio before actually using it. I did try various methods to get any sized image to work, but for some reason I'm not able to do it and it's squashing the image in different ways. If somebody does know how to fix that, please comment it down below so that everybody can learn how to use this particular effect for other aspect ratio images as well. Hopefully you learned something useful in this particular video and you can create really fun effects with both the black and white the effect taught in this video over here and this video right now. Also, this particular image is something that I drew on Krita, which is another free software. So if you want to watch me speed draw that image, you can go ahead and watch this video over here. So I'll see you in the next one. And until then, be sure to comment all your questions down below and always stay creative.